Hey, Mr. Richards here. Today you're going to learn about using dimensional analysis to convert rates. So we have to ask ourselves, what is dimensional analysis? Well, dimensional analysis is the process of including units of measurement as factors when you compute. Let's look at an example. We need to convert 520 miles per day to miles per hour. Well, let's set this up as 520 miles over one day. Now we need to go from miles per day to miles per hour. So ask yourself, how do I get from days to hours? Well, the fact we can use here is that one day equals 24 hours. Now when we set this up using dimensional analysis, we are going to say, all right, I'm going to multiply this by one day over 24 hours. Now, notice this was done deliberately, days over hours, because I want the days to be, since it's on the bottom to start, in order to cancel that out, it needs to be on top, just like 2 divided by 2 is 1 and kind of cancels in this type of problem. Day divided by day cancels out. And we are left with 520 miles in 24 hours. Now, we want to know miles per hour. So we're going to need to divide by 24 on top and bottom so that I can get on the bottom one hour and 520 divided by 24 will round to 21.7 miles in that one hour. So you can keep it as 21.7 miles over one hour or you could write this 21.7 miles per hour as another way to write this. A swimming pool is being milled, or, well, not milled, <laughs> about filled with water at about 300 gallons per hour. How many quarts per second is this round to the nearest tenth? Let's take our fact here of 300 gallons over one hour. And we want to eventually get this to quarts per second. Well, we're going to need to change both our gallons and our hours here. Now, what do we know about time in order to get us to seconds? We know that one hour is 60 minutes, and we know that 60 minutes, or not 60 minutes, but we also know that one minute is 60 seconds. So let's use those first to get our hours into seconds. Well, as we set up our first multiplication here, we need to get our hours into minutes. So we're going to say, okay, one hour is going to go on top so these can cancel over 60 minutes. And that hour will cancel out that hour. Now I need to get my minutes into seconds. So this is going to be one minute some of my minutes can cancel over 60 seconds. And now I've taken this to the seconds that I need. But what about getting my gallons to quarts? Well, I know that 4 quarts equals 1 gallon. So 
if I'm looking to cancel out my gallons, I can write my gallons on the bottom so that this cancels with that. And I'm left then with four quarts is one gallon. And so now I have my quarts and I have my seconds. So what I'm going to do is multiply my numbers on top. So 300 times 1 times 1 times 4 is 1,200, and this is quarts, over 1 times 60 times 60 times 1 is 3,600 seconds. And now I need to take this and get this into 1 second. And the way I can do that is to take 1,200 and divide by 3,600, and you'll get 0 0.3 with that 3 repeating quarts in one second. And if we're looking to round this to the nearest tenth, that's just going to be 0 0.3 quarts per one second. Again, you could write this as 0 0.3 quart per second as well. So what did we really do? As we milled, I mean filled, our pool with water, we started with our 30 gallons per hour and we set that up there. Then we said, okay, let's get our hours into seconds. Well, I know one hour is 60 minutes, one minute is 60 seconds. And we set it up in a way so our units can cancel to get us down to seconds. Then we looked at our gallons and said, okay, four quarts is a gallon. We canceled out our gallons. We multiplied the tops, multiplied by the bottoms, and then we simplified to get our final answer. Now here's a table of all of our measurement conversions that we could use. We have length capacity, and mass or weight. We have our customary to metric, we have our metric to customary. So if we want to complete the following conversion, round to the nearest hundredth if necessary, we can actually solve this in two different ways. We can have our four pounds, and this is just going to be over one. Now, as we want to multiply this, our pounds are going to be on the bottom, and our kilograms are going to be on top. Now we're going from customary to metric, so it would make the most sense to put in our one pound is 0 0.454 kilograms. That way my pounds here just cancel out and I can multiply 4 times 0.454 and get 1.816 kilograms. But if I'm rounding to the nearest hundredths, that's my hundredths place with the one. Look one to the right, and that's six going to round it up to 1.82 kilograms. Now the neat thing about dimensional analysis and having our facts are we could solve this one other way. We're still going to have our kilograms over pounds so that our pounds can cancel, but what if we used the other fact? What if we used the fact that one kilogram was 2.203 pounds? We're going to get the same answer because what we're left with here is 4 times 1 is 4 kilograms over 2.203. And when we divide 4 divided by 2.203, we get an answer of 1.8 one, five, seven, and it keeps going. Now remember our conversion factors are approximation, so even though we get slightly different decimals here, when we round this to the nearest hundredth, you get 1.82 kilograms again. You'll get the same answer. So whether you go and use the customary to metric, which I would recommend here as we're going from pounds to kilograms, customary to metric, or you could use your metric to customary fact, except you have to divide here. That's the neat thing with our conversions using dimensional analysis. 
is you could use either fact, and as long as you use it the correct way, you'll get the same answer. What if we're looking at a length conversion? Here we're going from 15 meters to feet, and this is metric to customary. So we can set this up 15 meters over 1 times. Now, we need to decide where are we putting our meters, where are we putting our feet. We want the meters to cancel out. And since the meters were on top here, the meters are going to go on the bottom here so that those cancel, which means we're going to write our feet here on top. Now again, you get the choice of which you use, but since we're going from metric to customary, I would use the metric to customary fact. Both work, but I would use the metric to customary. And what is that? Well, we have 1 meter equals 1.094 yards. And we have 1 meter is 3.279 feet. Let's make sure we use the right fact here. We have 1 meter is 3.279 feet. And when we multiply 14 times 3.279, you end up with 49.18. Five feet. And again, we need to round this to the nearest hundredth. So this is going to be 49.19 feet as the 5 rounds the 8 up. And I'll show you just real quick one more time. If you use the other fact, you can. You just have to make sure you set this up correctly. We again have feet over meters. Well, here, we have one foot is 0 0.305 meters. So you could set it up one foot, and then instead of multiplying, we divide by the 0 0.305 meters. Again, the meters do end up canceling out, and all we're left with is 15 over, 15 feet that is, over 0 0.305. And when you divide 15 by 0 0.305, you end up with 49.1 eight zero and this is where rounding is kind of fun because like wait a minute there's slightly different answers which is true these are slightly different they're still okay 49.18 feet versus 49.19 feet as long as you're showing your work and using the correct conversion factors both answers here are acceptable a cyclist is cycling about three kilometers per hour, rounded to the nearest hundredth. How many feet per second is this? So we were just going one unit at a time. Now we're going to complicate things by converting both the top and the bottom. So let's start off with what we're given. We're given three kilometers in one hour. Now we need to get our hours into seconds and our kilometers into feet. So we're going from kilometers per hour into feet per second. Let's do our time unit first. It doesn't matter which you choose to do first, just let's do our time unit first here for this. We need to cancel out our hours. So it's on the bottom now. We need to write it on top for this one. And what do we know? We know one hour is equal to 60 minutes. And so our hours cancel out. Now we're not into seconds yet. So what do we still have to do? We need to get our minutes into seconds. Well, our minutes are on the bottom. We need to get that to cancel out. So we're going to write one minute is equal to 60 seconds. That gets our minutes to cancel out. And we're in the unit we want now, which is seconds. Now we can think about what to do with our kilometers. Well, right now our kilometers are on top, so we need to get those on the bottom to be able to cancel them out. And as we look at our table here, we have one kilometer is this many miles, 0.621 miles, but we don't have a kilometers to feet conversion. So what we're going to have to do for that is get our kilometers into miles, then our miles into feet. Let's get our kilometers into miles. We have one kilometer is 0 0.621 miles. So our kilometers ends up canceling out. And now we need to get our miles into feet. Well, this isn't on the table. Our miles are going to cancel out. We have our feet on top. 
we should know that there are 5,280 feet in one mile. And now I have my feet. So a long problem, but if you take it one step at a time, you'll be fine. Now we need to multiply our tops. We have 3 times 1 times 1 times 0 0.621 times 5,280. And you end up with 9,836.64 feet over 1 times 60 times 60 times 1 times 1 is 3,600 seconds. And now if we want to get this into feet per 1 second, we need to divide by that 3,600 on top and bottom. And when we do that, we end up with 2.7324. feet per one second, and we're going into the nearest hundredth, so we have seven, or three, look to the two, that's not going to round up, so we have 2.73 feet per one second, which you could also write as 2.73 feet per second. So yes, a complicated question, getting kilometers per hour into feet per second, but if you take it one piece at a time, one conversion at a time, you'll eventually get it to feet per second, multiply, simplify, and you'll have your answer. Well, this is Mr. Richards, signing off. Good luck.